Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. I want to talk about, and now this is connected with, of course, uh, the Linguist on Language blogs. I want to talk about an issue that's come up uh, in response to um, a video that I did a little earlier, where I said that language learning is not about performance. And of course, this has attracted a lot of, uh, I should say a lot, but some criticism from people who say that, uh, you know, performance is very important. Uh, people have come at me and said that, uh, you know, you uh, are a dilettante. Uh, this one, I don't know, it's Harry or Billy or people like that commenting on my blog there saying that, uh, you know, obviously uh, my knowledge, I think it was Harry said, because I only know 4,000 characters in Chinese, that uh, Chinese people wouldn't respect me and I butcher the language and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, how well do we need to speak a language? Well, it depends. The answer is it depends what you want to do. Uh, it's perfectly legitimate to just want to take a peek at a language and see what it's all about, just to get a little bit of a sense of the language, just because you're interested. Perfectly legitimate. Uh, you may want to uh, learn enough in order to order a beer and find the bathroom. I personally don't do that because I find that, you know, if I go to a place with a few phrases, I'm pretty soon overwhelmed with whatever the native comes back to me with. So, so my own preference in learning is to get to a point where I can communicate comfortably on a fairly wide range of subjects. Uh, I also find that learning a language is uh, a sort of a, I often say it's it's a it's a s the famous myth of Sisyphus, uh, and I can't remember whether he was the one pushing uh, the rock up the hill that kept on rolling down, or he was in a cave and the water level level kept on rising. I, I can't remember. one of these Greek myths. The point is, you'll never achieve perfection. No matter how long you spend at it, you'll always wish you were a little better. So given that that's the case, you may as well enjoy whatever level you have. And uh, if you want to stop there, that's your choice. So it's not for others to criticize your level in the language. Language learning to me should be a personal thing, something you do for your own enjoyment. Now, granted, there may be situations uh, for school or to get a job where you have to achieve a certain level of fluency and typically of course this level of fluency is measured in some kind of grammar test or whatever but even there i'm convinced that people who approach language learning with the intention of enjoying it and and in exposing themselves to a lot of content and listening and reading and enjoying it uh, and communicating with people without worrying it worrying about it those people will do better and I've mentioned before that in Canada, when they, because they have a bilingual bonus, they'll test anglophones on their French, and if they can't use the subjunctive correctly, then they don't get their Frank French or bonus, or they don't qualify as bilingual, which of course is just typically ridiculous. Ridiculous. There are lots of people who won't get the subjunctive right and who can communicate very effectively and who are not afraid to use the language. And there will be those who will pass their test on the subjunctive and won't open their mouth because they're, they're so concerned about speaking perfectly. So, to my mind, how well do we speak the language? Do we need to speak it as well as you want? Do we need to be perfect in order to say we're fluent? No. We need to be able to communicate comfortably and we ourselves are the best judge of when we are comfortable in a language. And so, therefore, I'm against people competing in their performance. This idiot, and I'll say he's an idiot, this Harry guy, telling me that you need, you need to have 8,000 characters and that I'm butchering the language. I don't care, Harry, how well you speak Chinese, and you shouldn't care how well I speak Chinese. And this gets back to this other issue of a remark that was attributed to Katsumoto, who is a very well-known figure in, turn, in language learning circles on the web and who has his approach to language learning, uh, much of which I agree with, the idea that we should mine the language itself for things that we need 
He emphasizes mining it for sentences. I don't agree. I find that sentences are all somewhat unique. I prefer to mine content for words and phrases, but we quibble. Fundamentally, it's the language that teaches us. Uh, but Katsumoto is supposed to have said, and I haven't heard this from him, so I can't say that he did say it, it's just attributed to him, supposed to have said that he doesn't like people who claim to speak many languages because uh, they don't speak any of them well, and uh, he finds it very unsatisfying to talk to someone who doesn't have this depth in the language. Well, I don't, I don't know whether Katsumoto said this, but if that was what said, I mean, I don't, I learn a language, Japanese, French, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, mostly to communicate with speakers of the language, not to communicate with other learners. So I communicate with native speakers when I read and listen, which is what I mostly do because I don't know many Russians here. But if I meet a Russian, then I communicate with him or her in Russian. And if we are successful in communicating, I'm happy. Uh, whether that native speaker is interested in getting to know me for whatever reason, including my ability in the language, well, that's his choice or hers. But for us to say we don't respect other language learners because they haven't achieved a certain depth in a language, to me, that's just silly. Uh, what we do with our languages is entirely our own affair. So uh, I'm against the idea of perfection. I'm against the idea that we're constantly worried about how well we speak. Uh, language learning is a personal thing. And, uh, and so far as speaking with other non-native speakers, I have no interest in speaking with other non-native speakers. And I would suggest that for learners of a language, the further away they get from other non-native speakers, the better, especially from their own language group. And I think, uh, you know, whether it be in Japan or France or places like that, where people sit in class or in, in, in English speaking countries, they sit in class with other uh, people who speak their own language and hear them. But there we can talk about that. I wouldn't say butcher the language, but that's not what you want to emulate. So you should really focus on listening to the language as spoken by native speakers and but not pass judgment on other people's learning efforts. Everybody learns for their own reasons. Everybody should feel satisfied with whatever level they have achieved. And if they're motivated to do, do more, they should continue and they will never achieve perfection. And so they may as well enjoy it. So there you have it. Bye for now.